Okay, welcome to Pseudocode with Mystery. So today we're just going over Pseudocode basics and hopefully trying to get you guys ready for your HSC, um, explaining the characteristics of Pseudocode and how you can use all of those elements to write your Pseudocode effectively. So let's begin. Okay, so basic guidelines. So all keywords are capitals. So we'll see over here, we want to begin a procedure or a subroutine. We capitalize the words begin and end and you should get into the habit of naming your procedures and subroutines so if your procedure or subroutine is going to calculate the tax call it begin calc tax if it's going to add two numbers together call it begin add two numbers just to make it really specific so there's no confusion about what section of code belongs to what so you'll see here also we have the if then else and if for that control structure there case Otherwise, end case, are all capitalized, the while, end while, repeat until, and the for, to, step, and next are all capitalized for each of those control structures. The other thing you need to know, the main point for this, is whatever you begin or start with, you need to make sure you finish it and close off with that. So begin and end the procedure name, if is the beginning, end if is the final section for that, case, end case, while, end while, repeat until and for and next so whatever you open up make sure you close the second point there we have is indent statements here at this binary selection we have the if then condition and then our statement gets indented to show that it's part of that if statement so we have all of our control parts here and then anything that belongs to that section of code gets indented i like to get into the habit of also anything that's in my procedures i indent as well just so it clears up the code makes it really clear and concise and easy to see what section of code belongs to what okay so here's another section of code so you can see here these parts line up so i begin and end they have those meaningful relevant names so add two numbers it's clear and evident what we're doing in this task we've got those parts that line up there and then everything that's inside of that is indented and lines up as well so the first part after you've named your procedure is to initialize any variables you have and you can do this by using these words as set and let whatever you choose to use you should stick with that throughout the code you shouldn't start changing that throughout so if you're going to use the set use set for each variable or let use that for each variable but don't switch between the two but either is fine to use so these are other words that i like to use pseudocode isn't an exact but i've tried to standardize it to make it a little bit simpler and easier to remember and do input get enter I use for just general actions when we get something from the user and I use the word read when we get something from a file. Outputs, output, display, print and write, similar sort of things. I use output, display or print when I'm just printing to the screen and when I'm writing to a file I use the word write. Get into the habit of naming all of your variables and procedures. Give them relevant meaningful names like I said before. Use the variables. If you're going to get information from a user that's their age or their name call it age and name don't just come up with some random number or letter give them proper meaningful names okay and camel caps is again seen here so the add two numbers so we start off with lowercase i just like to do that and then every word after that its first letter is capitalized and that's why it's called camel because it goes up and down like camel humps initialize the numbers get the first number get the second number Next, our total will now equal the first number plus the second number, and then display the sum of your two numbers is, and then the total, which is the variable. And then we end that procedure. Okay, next. So this is more detailed one. So the same sort of thing. We have the set. So we set and initialize our two variables. So we set the required points to nine. Each player's points is set to zero. And then we call a sub procedure. So sub procedures, when you call them, do an underline to show that it's a separate procedure and so we go call decide server and then we go down here and then begin decide server we see that's all capitalized and everything's indented so we do our first action we toss a coin capitalize our control structure so if heads then do our actions else do our other actions and end the if and then end that procedure after that procedure is done we go that comes back up to here and it repeats the action so repeat service of the ball and then plays until the point is one if the server wins the rally then increment the point by one else swap player status and then so we just swap who's serving and then we do this until someone until the points 
are known. Then if that's correct, then we declare the winner. So here we have a nested loop. So repeat is the first loop. And then the second one here, this indented repeat, is the second one. And so they closed off there. That closes off there. And this is where the indentation, you can see, makes a big difference. So you can see exactly what code is a part of what section. Okay, so as I said, when we use sub procedures or subroutines, we need to underline its name. So we have our main program. Once again, begin is capitalized, end is capitalized. We give it a name for that procedure. Let's call it main program. We initialize our values. So here you can, once again, you can say set, let, or even the word initialize and say initialize text or whatever variable you're doing. Set it to or the word equals. We do our action. So we input tax as a decimal input from the user and it gets assigned to a variable called pay. And then we call our sub procedure calc tax and we pass the value of pay, which is here, as a parameter to this sub procedure or function. So once that comes in here, it calculates the tax, displays the result, then comes back and finishes off that program. So whenever you're using sub procedures or subroutines, you need to underline when you call or reference it and when you actually write it out as well, just so you know they're related. So to make our pseudocode more correct, we have these operators. So we've got logical operators, arithmetic operators, assignment operators, and comparison operators. So whenever I use a logical operator, I always capitalize that just to make it easier and stand out so it doesn't get confused as any variables. So an example of that is if age is greater than 18 and age is less than 65. So there we've got an end. So the difference between an end and an or, if you use the operator end, both of these options have to be correct. If you use an or, only one of them has to be correct. And the word not means saying if age is not 18, you could use it that way. So for the arithmetic operators, I've only just done some of the basics. There's a lot more on it, depending on which language you use. There's specific ones related to that language. So arithmetic, we've got plus, minus, times, and divide. So just an example there is total plus score. The assignment. So this is when we want to assign a value to a variable. So we can see here, count plus equals one. This means it will add one to itself, the variable count. And there's another example here, just says age equals input. If you want to do the reverse, if you want to take one away from a count, you just put the minus equals one. Or you can put whatever value here and that will take that away from itself. And the final one for operators is comparison. So this is where we want to compare values. If you want to check if the values are equal to each other, we do a double equal sign. So we see here, so while mark is equal to 100, we'll do that action. And so if we want, we can swap that around and say the exclamation in the equals means does not equal to. So while mark does not equal to 100, and do the action. And we've got less than, greater than, less than and equal to, or greater than and equal to. And once you understand how these all work, you can use these in your pseudocode without having to write out the whole code. You can just use these symbols, which will make things a little bit quicker as well. So the next part we'll go into is pseudocode examples. So here, input the dimensions of a rectangle and print its area. So we just say, start off, capitalize, begin, calc size of the name, we get length and breadth. So one thing you'll notice here is that you can do some things together. Sometimes it's better and easier just to keep them separate. This one, it's a simple program, so you can combine them and it doesn't get too complicated. But once you start doing multiple ones, it's going to get a lot harder to understand and comprehend. So begin, everything then is indented and that's pretty straightforward. So this one doesn't do any initialization. It just does your basic steps. This one, input the dimensions of a rectangle and print the area and the perimeter. So begin calc size, we input the length and the breadth. This time area equals length times breadth, perimeter equals two times the length times the breadth. Then we display those two values. Our other example here, this time we use um, a binary selection, an if then statement. So we say begin calc size, input the side. If the side is negative, then print error message, else print side times side, and then end if. So remember we've got the other pairing up so the if starts at the end if finishes that off and closes that section of code off everything again is indented so we start here they line up begin and end line up if and if line up so doing that just makes things really clear and easy to understand what section of code is part of what okay so this one 
we have our logical operator. So if A equals B and, uh, as I said, capitalize that just to make it easier to stand out, and A equals C, then display all equal, else display not equal. Remember, indent everything, capitalize all your keywords. Okay, so this one here, we're going to use a while loop. So while and while pair up. We initialize our value here. We set it n equals 1. So, so while n is less than or equal to 100, display the value of n, and n gets added to itself plus 1. So it keeps on incrementing going up by 1. If you wanted to, you could just say n plus equals 1, and that would be the same as that statement. So use that for a comment, same as n plus equals. So yeah, that's the same way, slightly less code, just one letter less. Okay, other options we've got, we've got a for loop. So for, and then we start off with the letter n, so that's going to be our incrementer. So going through the whole section of the for loop. We use for loops when we have a set range of numbers, we have a set known number that it's going to repeat. So this one's going to go from 1 to 100. So we say 4 and then n equals 1 to 100. Sometimes you may say step. And you may by 1 or by 2 and by how many it's going to go up by in increments. And we're just going to display n each time. So it's going to start off with a value of 1 and then go next. And then just goes to the next n. So now that automatically increments to go to number 2. And so remembering 4 and next other pairing so four starts it next finishes and closes that part off same thing again we have multiple inputs at once so four close that off with the next make sure they pair up properly indent everything correctly so whatever is indented inside of that for loop means that it's a part of that and will get repeated and this time instead of starting with one is now whatever the user enters and to the finish number so this time it corrects the code so we get the same thing, the start and the finish number, but this time it does a check. So it says, if start is greater than finish, then print an error message, else do that loop. Making sure, once again, everything is indented and capitalized. So the next part, we've got our main procedure and our sub-procedure. So input start and finish. So if start is greater than finish, go down to interchange. So it could say call interchange or just interchange, but we know that that's a sub procedure because it's underlined. And so to correct this down here, this should also be underlined as well. And underline it down here to make that paired up properly. Go back to it again. So begin main, get the two variables, start and finish values. If start is greater than finish, go to interchange. So we come down here. We change those numbers and swap them around, so it swaps those two values. That's why we have that temp value. Then we come back up to here, and then we can continue the correct action. This one does an example of the while loop, but also plus our operators. So you have the while and your end. Make sure that's capitalized. It has also comparison operators, plus your mathematical ones, your assignments. So this is a good example to see what you need to do for your pseudocode. So pseudocode again is just writing down step by step what you need to do to solve the problem. So this one, so this example here gets a little bit tricky. So this uses nested for loops. A nested loop is when you have two loops, one with inside the other. It starts off for hours, goes from 0 to 11. So it's going to go from 0 all the way through to 11.59 and then it will start again. So it starts off on 0 is does the for loop so you can see there this is all of the hours part and then it goes into minutes so it starts off from zero and then does every value inside of that so it goes zero 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 one zero two zero three all the way up to 59 and then that will go back up to change the hour to one and then it'll do the same thing again so one zero one 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 two and so on until it gets to 59. Only thing you need to make sure that this does when you're doing this is that it does reset itself to zero so that it does get all of those values properly. And so that's the benefit of using nested loops. Okay, well, last one part we'll go over is just using files for pseudocode. So when you want to open a file, simple as that, just say open the name of the file and what method you're opening the file for. So it could be input, reading, writing, and appending are the three main ones. So read, write, and append is the mode for opening a file. So this one says open Fred for input, 
So you're going to read it. Open June for output means you're going to write something to it. So we'll just go into an example of that. So open Fred for input. Read line from Fred. While not the end of file, display line. Read line from Fred. End while. The only time we'll go to that is when it does reach the end of the file. So once it's the end of the file, it comes out of that while loop and then closes off all the files. So another way to write this could be just while not equal to EOF. So you could just write while not equal to EOF, which stands for end of file. That's perfectly fine as well. And it will do whatever actions it is until it reaches the end of the file and then finishes it up by going to end while and then closes off all the files. So the same, similar one again, this time we open it for input, open it for output, meaning we input is reading, output is writing, then read the first line and so then it checks, is it the end of the file? Is there any content in it? If not, then we write the line from Fred to June. Then we go to the next line and then we continue through that until we end the file. Then last thing, remember if you open a file, you close it just like your procedures and your control structures. Every time you open something up, you close it off. So while end while as you close, open your file, close your files. Get into the habit of that. And there's one more example. So hopefully this has been helpful. Make sure you check out these two documents, Software Design Development Stage 6, Software and Core Specifications, which gives you a lot of extra examples of algorithms and also the MAD methods of algorithm descriptions. Give you more information on how to use all of these. It gives you some practice questions and solutions as well. So definitely worth the, worth the browse preparing for your HSC. Good luck and see you soon.